Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel XGN and Protein X. In this tutorial video, I will talk about IC staining principle. So, here I will not talk about the protocol for this staining. So, here mainly I will talk about the IC staining principle. So, let's begin. So, first we need to know that why we do IC staining or what is the purpose of the IC staining. So, this is very much useful and convenient technique for detection of the specific antigen or proteins or cellular components in separated tissues or tissue sections. So in the research, so it is very much useful and convenient technique to detect any kind of specific protein marker. So IC staining is also used in the diagnosis purposes to detect any kind of specific protein marker in any kind of disease for example in the cancer so in the cancer if you want to detect any kind of any kind of cancer protein marker for example p53 or any kind of other protein marker then you can use ic staining to detect them very much easily so next is the ic staining principle so as you know that the, in the tissues there are a lot of different kind of antigen or proteins are present. So here I used different kind of different color arrow to detect this kind of antigens or proteins. So for example if I want to detect VGF protein in the tissue then I need to select the primary antibody against VGF. So this primary antibody is specifically it can target VGF. Then the secondary antibody, it need to be selected based on the primary antibody. So if the primary antibody is the mouse, then you need to use the secondary antibody anti-mouse. Or if it is like rabbit, then the secondary antibody need to be selected anti-rabbit. But remember that the secondary antibody need to be selected the HRP conjugated for IC staining. So HRP is the paroxidase enzyme that conjugated in the secondary antibody. So eventually you need to add the DAB reagent. So this DAB reagent is very much important to add in the final step because this DAB, this is the substrate of this enzyme and this DAB when it bind with the enzyme then it produce some brown color. So next I want to talk something about the overview of this DAB reagent. So this DAB actually this is a chromogenic substrate for the HRP and this kind of reagent for example the DAB it is it is used normally as a signal enhancer in conjunction with the HRP based immune staining systems and also when this kind of HRP and DAB when bind together then the dark brown color formed. So here as you see in this picture that the HRP when the DAB with DAB the substrate it bind with this enzyme then this kind of brown color formed and then this brown color it is a detection for this for the presence of any specific protein marker. So next is the counter staining. So this is the final step of this IC staining process. So usually we use hematoxylin this kind this uh, staining reagent and this is actually the natural dye which is extracted from the heart root of the logo tree. So this staining agent it normally stain the nucleus. So as you see in this picture that after the after the dab when the brown color formed and then when you counter stain with the hematoxylin then the this nucleus is stained with the violet color. So then it will be very, very much easier to detect any kind of tumor in the cancer, in the, in the can cancer tissues. So this is why hematoxin is very much useful for detection of the, this kind of, in this kind of case. So then I want to show you here one of the untreated and treated tissues that stained with the alpha SMA. So here is the, this is the alpha SMA specific specific antibody is used here so as you see in this brown color these are indicating the presence of the alpha sma so in the untreated group 
there are a lot of alpha spa but in the treated group this alpha spa is significantly reduced so this is all about this is staining principle so if you want to if you want, if you have any queries for this video you can write in the comment section if you like this video hit the like button share it and thanks for watching